All right, so our next guest, incredible, fantastic, amazing. I think that, uh, did, I, did I cover it? Kick ass. I got to say ass. <laughs> All right, our next guest has had an amazing career. He has been able to be successful for the last 27 years playing amazing. <laughs> He's just gonna come out. What an opening! <laughs> right on! I need all of my panels to start that way. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Michael Brooker. Thank you! Thank you, thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah, so now what? Uh, now I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Oh, my hat comes off. Right. I, I see. Can, I love the hair, by the way. That is an awesome look. Right on! Oh, questions, you're going to ask me some I'm going to ask a few questions. Oh, do I it, thought baby. We, would, Come on. we would talk a little bit about a television show. Yep. I think we all might know it The Walking Dead. Anybody? <laughs> Has anybody heard of that one? I'm not sure. You play a character named Merle Dixon. That's right. He's, he's kind of intense. Who? Merle. He's kind of, kind of intense. A little, little surly, not a, not a puppy. Intense. Intense. <laughs> That's why you're the actor. <laughs> um, to say that he is intense is, is probably an understatement, but what first attracted you to the role, if you were attracted to the role at all? <laughs> I'm hoping you were. It certainly wasn't the money. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, at that time it was the money, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, my buddies uh, gave me a ring and told me about the role and uh, had mentioned that, yeah, the zombies are coming through the door. He's, he's handcuffed on the rooftop and he ends up cutting his hand off and, uh, and I say, what? And they said, well, the, the dude cuts his hand off, you know? And I said, okay, I'll do the role. <laughs> I was the only actor willing to cut his hand off for the role. That's why I got the role. But it looks like it grew back. I'm like a lizard. <laughs> Now, Merle was not originally featured in the comic book. Do you feel like that gave you more creative license to create your character? Was it nice working without a template? I never work with a template, even when I have a template. <laughs> I, I, I use it as a, just sort of a, a guidepost, and uh, that's basically what scripts are anyway, you know. Um, and we, we take it and we take in the information that's given us and, and we uh, mix it up inside and spit out something different, usually. Did you have a process for creating your character? Yeah, I, I read it, I take it in, and I jump up and down a few times and spit it out. Like Got to mix it up though a little bit. Yeah, it's my process. What was the most challenging part of your character? Nothing. There was nothing. <laughs> nothing challenging about that role. No. You're just that good. <laughs> um, you know what? Every role has its, its little ups and downs and its challenges. And uh, so you've got to find some sort of handle, some sort of through line. And once you, once you discover that, um, everything just sort of falls into place, sort of like dominoes, you know, you get the domino effect once you get that first one and just flick it over, all the others just fall into place. That's sort of what happens to me when I read a script. I, I'll read it and, and there could be one word or one phrase or one scene that everything sort of uh, evolves around. It, it starts sort of uh, developing from that, that center, that core, and that's kind of how it works for me. That being said, how difficult was, to play the, was it to play the zombie version of your character? Or what? was that just more fun? That, nobody knows about that yet, man. Do they not? God. Yep, do you, right? There are still people over in Africa. I suppose I should say have spoiler alert. They have not seen that alert. episode yet. <laughs> you 
can't be spoiling stuff like that. All right, well. <laughs> What's the matter with you? You call yourself a moderator. I would like to remind everybody that spoilers are a problem and may happen. <laughs> uh, what was your question? Uh, how difficult is it to play a zombie? <laughs> Yeah, not a problem. It took two hours to put the makeup on, and uh, the only issue was uh, I had had my arm broken, so uh, I couldn't really reach out with uh, a little Merle, and that's kind of sort of the vision was to have a, a zombie Merle, you know, using the, the knife hand mm -hmm. to make it even more threatening and... Uh, 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 so the body English, the body language, because the arm was broken, was a little bit more, uh, it was a little different. It was more kind of swingy kind of thing, and, and it wasn't that, that whole reaching and, and grabbing type movement that I think some people had envisioned. So that, that's the only, uh, that was the only real challenge. The rest was... Uh, um, not crying when they put those stupid uh, uh, eye things in my eye. You know, those things that, the yeah, those, they were ugly and mean and they were big and round and I couldn't see very much. And they just, and the person came up to me and just said, here, open your eye, let me see. And they went, <laughs> and I'm like, ah! That hurt. I'm supposed to be dead and it still hurt, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think perhaps it's just method acting? They they really want to bring out your performance with these giant contacts. <laughs> Make sure you really feel the pain. Yeah, they 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 yeah, it's part of the whole show. Yeah, the, the pain that the actors go through for that show is part of uh, developing their characters. The producers know this, the writers know this. You know, the directors know this. That's why they they force us to do painful things. They do it every day, every day. Rooker, go run through those woods, pick up about 50 ticks, and let us burn them off you with this torch. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff we had to deal with every day. Speaking of pain, and I'm sorry I will have to spoil again, but your death scene with Norman Reedus was very, very powerful and very emotional. <laughs> what was it like filming that scene? Made cry. You made Daryl cry. <laughs> he deserved to cry. <laughs> the little crybaby had been a crybaby all his life. It's about time he really cried for something. So I'm assuming you his enjoyed... His big brother. I'm assuming you Don't would... worry, y'all. Merle is in a better place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. You had another... What's your I, I'm assuming that you enjoy playing a character that's not kind of the all-out hero. Don't it, assume. Like <laughs> Don't assume. I will not assume. I suppose, better question, what is it like playing a character like Merle? What... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> That's secret stuff. All right. What's it like playing someone not like Merle? That would be horrible. <laughs> do you feel you have more freedom in a character like Merle to, to do things you wouldn't normally do? Or is that Are you shitting me? <laughs> Mer the character of Merle Dixon had more freedom than anyone. He had more freedom than the writers on that show. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> this cat could say and do almost anything. Um, uh, we, we started pulling back on the language after, after the sponsors started getting bigger. <laughs> uh, anyway, funny. Um, no, Merle, <laughs> but true. I didn't say that, no. What do you mean? No, never mind. All right, a fun what? question now. Your zombie apocalypse team, who's on it? Zombies are coming. What's your name? Who do you, my name is Danny. Who? <laughs> Danny. 
Danny? Like a boy. There's going to be no one called Danny on my zombie apocalypse team. <laughs> to be honest, I'll probably be the as first to We will use Danny as bait. <laughs> Come get her. Look, she is I so delicious. I don't run very fast. It's okay. <laughs> so we're going to open it up for everybody, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're going to open up this to, uh, to the audience. You guys, I hope you have a few good questions. Uh, and uh, I, I, this is my favorite part of the, uh, of the show. So come on, y'all. And just a reminder, our line for questions is over here on the left. I Don't everybody get rush it once. Jeez, I have four questions. I'm going to have to really milk this sucker. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and start. Okay, so I'm going to kind of uh, piggyback off of uh, one of Danny's questions, but... Uh, what was it like to pretty much win over the entire Walking Dead audience in a single episode? Uh, what, did, what did you say? <laughs> I, I asked, what was it like to win over the, pretty much the entire Walking Dead audience in a single episode? I, I gotta tell you that um, the echo in this room is, crazy. is really messed up. And you have to really enunciate and speak slowly so that the echo is not okay. echoing over the echo that just passed. So ask me your question again and do it very uh, easy and slow and enunciate and I'll probably understand it. Oh, man. Don't what? be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> you it's scare me. A, the... the uh, <laughs> The echo in the room is, is, is uh, uh, making your comments, and your question, very uh, okay. bad. Maybe I if can't I stand away, you. that's a little bit easier. Um, what was it like to win over the entire Walking Dead audience in a single episode <laughs> kick ass <laughs> you know what that that role had an awesome arc from the very first moment in season one all the way until the end and that was the only way a character like Merle could have gone out of a show you know that that's just the only way he could have gone out and um, and so the idea of, uh, was sort of being um, hatched earlier in that uh, earlier in that episode so uh, if you watch very carefully if you go back you'll see little little hints some of those hints were uh, edited out because of time restraints uh, but many of them are still there and uh, you'll discover that there's all kinds of little uh, little uh, nuances that appear and and you're not sure why they're there but at the end it all paid off that was a great way to exit and uh, thank you uh, to all the writers and all the people that put up with me <laughs> on that show because we had a good time uh, um, and uh, making, making this character, you know, a, a guy that has total commitment for his family and his brother, his last remaining blood relative on the earth. And, um, and so it was very cool. Thank you. And I'm glad that that happened. Thank you very much. Yeah. First, I just want to say nice job on Black Ops 2. That was an amazing job you did in that yeah, game. Yeah, right on, man. Thank you. Second, are you going to keep using Little Merle to do yard work? Like trim bushes, since you said on Talking Dead that you've gotten really experienced at using it in little small spaces. Little Merle don't do yard work. <laughs> if you step onto my yard, perhaps, 
<laughs> or are you going to go hunt squirrels like Daryl did? No, I don't hunt squirrels with little Merle. And it surely ain't with some little crossbow either. Thank I you. chase them down, grab them by the nap, nap of the neck and chew them up. You got to skin them before you eat them, though. Don't forget that. Yeah, go ahead. Next. I just want to say uh, thank you for coming to Phoenix Comic Con. Like, it, this seriously made my whole day. Oh, right on. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I love Phoenix. We did a, a movie called Tombstone down there in Tucson. And uh, very awesome movie. And uh, I, I was up here uh, in Phoenix a lot. I, I got to uh, make a, a number of friends up here, and they still live here. And... Um, uh, hopefully a few of them are out there in the audience. If not, they'll be here over the weekend at least. Yeah, but thanks. Oh, and just a quick question. That was not the question? No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, come on. Get your okay. question out. Spit uh, it out. Was there any scene throughout the whole series, which episodes you were on, that you want to change or they didn't film it the way you liked it or anything like that? No. <laughs> Everything came out the way I liked it, and um, uh, sometimes the things that didn't come out and didn't make it into the final end product was mainly because of time, and uh, they, got that, they got that show time to the second, you know, so it, it's pretty uh, amazingly put together, and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how uh, my character uh, uh, played out. Thank you. Except the death. Wow. Hi there. Hey, what um, happened to your arm? Your friend has no arm. It was deliberate. Go ahead, ask your question. I'm sorry. So. Oh, oh. Shut up. <laughs> what he's trying to say is uh, we noticed your just charismatic personality. We really enjoyed watching you on the show and afterwards on the Walk Talking Dead. I also follow you on Twitter, and I enjoy that, too. So you seem like somebody who would really engage your coworkers and your cast members, and we were wondering what kind of pranks you pulled on set. I, I don't tell jokes and pull cranks. Don't look at me like that. She's lying if she says anything. No, I... Um, I I think I think uh, uh, Norman is is more of the prankster than I, you know how little brothers can be. <laughs> yeah, so you don't turn your back on them too often. Otherwise, you may end up you know with a crossbow in the the nape of the neck. Um, uh, you know what? There there were there were uh, situations on set that uh, were a bit funny, but they never happened on this. On this shoot, they were uh, during a, a movie I did called Eight Men Out. Never mind. <laughs> no, there was there were no uh, pranks. We don't do pranks on The Walking Dead. All business, huh? No, there are none. I, I'm not allowed to say if there were or if there were not any pranks. Anyway, that they'll 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 all get together and beat me up. I think. Thank you. And thank you. We'd love you. to grab a picture with you later. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come on. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm short. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you, as a person, have a, a connection to Merle as a character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a nice haircut. I like that in Merle. I like his name, Merle Dixon. Yeah. Um, the connections, as an actor, you know, I don't want to get into the whole acting thing, but the, I, I, it, there's, you know, you can talk all day about this kind of stuff, but all the, all, almost every actor that I know of, you, you got to find your own way to develop these roles. I mean, you get the, you go to school, you find out, you get the basics, you get some training, and then you, 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 you learn to do it yourself, and you learn to find your own method and your own way of, 
of creating this madness and this magic. So, um, yeah, I have my way of doing it, and I ain't telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> uh, okay, so on an episode, Merle mentions that him and Daryl have a secret call to each other. What, what is it? Since, did, did you guys develop that at all? Yeah, the secret call that we never really got a chance to, to call? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's right. You know, we were... <laughs> I think I, they call that a plot I, hole. I remember now. No, no, no. We had a secret call. I, I said, you know, we were talking about, well, how are we going to um, communicate with each other? Because we're, we're in the woods a lot, and we're hunters. And so we would have, you know, if, we, if, if you're, like, uh, uh, getting uh, uh, some poor creature in, a, in, a, in, a, in trouble... <laughs> Maybe, you know, you would have secret, you know, Indian calls, you know, something like, you know, what, what do you think would be a secret call? <laughs> woo woo, woo woo. <laughs> that was, did you guys develop we, anything like that? <laughs> we were trying to develop a couple of secret calls one day and we, look, we sounded like a couple of idiots out there. <laughs> I think the writers and the directors saw us trying to develop a couple of calls and they decided to write that part out. <laughs> we can't they put wanted that on they television. really wanted us they wanted us to look cool and macho and, and like real woodsmen. They didn't want us to look like a kid from New York City and some kid from Alabama out there going like wah, wah. <laughs> Go with meow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you could do a, an owl. Oh, oh, we could do a howl. Woo! Or is it what else? An owl. An owl? Woo! Don't they go woo? Woo! Woo! Right? Our panel just turned into animal calls <laughs> with Michael Rooker. <laughs> Thank you. We have no idea. We never got that far in the, um, in the script to actually develop an actual call that, that we could actually agree on. You know, he wanted to do more of a whistle. I wanted to do more of a, of a guttural thing. And, and they never really came together, and we never got a chance to do our call. I'm saddened by that. <laughs> that would have been that would have been really stupid. <laughs> uh, so anyway, thank you. That's a beautiful thank question. You. You've been paying attention. Don't forget, you have homework to do. <laughs> Next, go ahead, sir. Um, I was wondering when um, you first did the first season and they left you on the roof, was it always planned that you'd be coming back or was that something that they decide on later? I don't know. <laughs> I was, um, once, once Frank Darabont ended up writing the, uh, the monologue, that four and a half minute amazing piece of writing, um, I kind of had a feeling that they were setting this character up to uh, somehow, somewhere down the road, uh, make a re-entry into the, into the show. But nobody said anything about that. Uh, and, and I had no idea if it was really gonna happen. This was just sort of in my own mind that it's, uh, it seems uh, logical that then the, way, the way they kept bringing the character up you know, and talking about my bike, talking about my stash, talking about my clap, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, and all the drugs that I had, you know, ended up saving T-Dog's life. You know, all, all this kind of stuff, you know, is sort of like keeping the, the image of Merle in the, in the minds of the audience. And that, that really helped. Because when I, when I came back as a delusion in season two, everybody thought, I. I I think a lot of people thought it was real that I was back, yeah. And then it turned out to be a delusional state uh, of my 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 brother, 
And so uh, then that was like more water that was sort of splashed and, and sort of making a few waves and people really wanted to see this character come back. And I think um, uh, because of you guys, I, th I have a feeling they were gonna bring me back, but because of all the fans and all the demands and all the people really intrigued by this character, that's, that's why my guy got to come back in season three. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Rooker. So, if, if you were happy or sad or thought you hated this guy before and you hate him even more now, it's all your fault that I got to get, got to come back. Hello, Mr. Rooker, how you doing? I'm, Good, brother. Uh, thanks to my wife, I've been turned on to The Walking Dead. Uh, big fan, but I follow you mostly because of McMasters. What was your uh, experience in uh, Tombstone and with all the actors and... What? What was your experience doing what? the movie Tombstone? Which experience? I had a whole bunch of experiences. Just, there were a lot of, a lot of amazing, great actors on that show. Um, uh, we filmed it on here in the dead of summer. It was uh, pretty amazing. I was dressed all in leather, and it was... You could imagine what my uh, thoughts were. Well, I do old West. Why am I in leather? Why am I riding this horse that does not like me? How come my gun will not shoot? I mean, give me a break. No, they, they, give me, I want a real gun. I want a horse that likes me. And I, and I want dancing girls. Well, I do Old West reenacting, and, and I take your attitude of Merle and McMasters, and I put that together as Virgil and or when I do Frank McClowry. And thanks to you. I, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Next. But I do have a card for you. Oh, uh, uh, next. Go ahead, just put it right there, sir. Right there. Thank you, brother. Uh, quick question about Nazi zombies. I'm a huge fan. And yes, just, sir. I was just wondering how, it came, how you came to be a part of that. About, uh, uh, about the Nazi zombies? Yeah, why, I was just curious in how Black you Ops were chosen. One, yeah. Or in the Call of the Dead, right? Yes. They were, the Call of the Dead... Yeah, well, you know what? Call of the Dead came about because of The Walking Dead. One of the producers knew another producer, and they, and they, they were looking for this character, uh, uh, and, and uh, they thought to themselves, well, why don't we, why don't we make this a, a real character? Why don't we use a real person? And so they started thinking about uh, basically who they'd want, like Danny Trejo. And Robert England and myself, Michael Rooker, and you know, and so we all got we we got to uh, be in a kind of a fictitious George Romero film within this game, which is really awesome. Oh, yeah. And uh, George is a very cool guy, and we and uh, we got to play ourselves, and we got to kill zombies forever and ever and ever. I don't think you can ever win that game. I've never beaten it. You can never beat that game no. because you just keep the zombies keep coming and coming and coming. You got to keep killing them and killing them and killing them and, and, and jumping on the zip line and running away and then they catch you and then you come back to life and, you, they, and then you go kill them again and they come back to life and they kill you again and then you, that's, that's the game. <laughs> That is an amazing game, man. You are stuck in this perpetual world of killing zombies and coming back to life. You can never, it's like, it's like. It uh, kind of sounds uh, like a metaphor. It's like doing, <laughs> it's like doing a movie called The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger when the last scene of the movie is Arnold having a scene with Arnold, for God's sake. No! Get me out of this! You cannot leave that game. Thank you. That's an awesome Thank you. game. Yes, sir. What you got? First of all, spoiler alert. Uh, your death scene at the end of season three was probably one of the best death scenes I've ever witnessed. So thank you mm. for that. <laughs> thank you very much. That, that, was a, that was a very cool scene. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, 
fighting and, 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 and enjoying getting my, my tail kicked in that scene. Uh, go ahead, you got, uh, tell, me, uh, tell me, I know you got a great question then if you opened with that. Yeah, I was wondering what, uh, are you currently working on anything, uh, anything coming out, if you can talk about that? Can we talk about it? If you can. Over a beer maybe at 3 a.m. in the morning. Fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to talk about anything uh, that I'm about to do um, that um, I will be out of the country for. And I'll be working with a dear friend of mine. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk any and say anything about that. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Shut up. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. I was wondering how many times it took to shoot the scene of uh, Daryl stabbing you at the end. How many times what happened? What? How many times it take to shoot the scene of uh, Daryl killing you? He only killed me once. <laughs> was it a multiple take scene? No, we did it one time. Just one time because that little... Uh, that, that guy gets a little out of hand, you know, and he's like, he's supposed to stab me, you know, you, you can stab a zombie in the head one time and they're dead, right? This cat goes off on my ass. He's like stabbing me like, every time I watch it, I, I forget how many times he stabbed me because there's so many damn times he stabbed me that I can't count that high. What, what is it, like eight or nine? Well, do you think Merle Zombie would have gone down in one? I feel like the multiple times were necessary. Aw, <laughs> thank you, baby. <laughs> I, like, I like multiple times is good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, could. I like that. That's cool. What's your name again? <laughs> Stop it. Next. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Michael. I wanted to know, uh, how did you first find out your character Merle was going to die, and what was your reaction? I found out about two weeks, two and a half weeks before, and my reaction, you want to know my true reaction? Yes. I was saddened and I cried. I cried when he died, so... I don't want to go. Uh, no, that wasn't really my reaction, but I, I thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> Thank you. That's not in the script. <laughs> Hello. So my first um, exposure to you was you exposing your backside in Mallrats. Uh, yeah. Just wondering it, if was, it was shiny and big. That's all, all I could remember. <laughs> Any good uh, experiences or stories of Kevin Smith? From mall rats? Yes. Uh, yeah, they really tried to poison me that night, man. <laughs> those chocolate-covered pretzels? Dude, those cats are ugly and mean. I, I actually, they found out my weakness. I do love chocolate-covered pretzels, and I love the dark chocolate, the Godiva chocolate. Oh, Come on, please. I love those things. And they, they found out that I, that I love chocolate-covered pretzels, and they wrote, in that, that, they wrote that scene in, and uh, trying to find a way of getting me out of the picture. And so there you have it. Um, yeah. So there's, a, no, there's another scene in there that I've always missed, and it's a scene where it's a continuation of when I've gotten sick from the chocolate-covered pretzels, and I come over and I lean on the escalator like this, on the railing of the escalator, but unbeknownst to myself, because I'm not feeling well, I didn't realize the escalator is going, and I lean, and all of a sudden it starts taking me down. I start tumbling, tumbling and tumbling, and calling for my mommy and uh, stuff like that. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Fantastic. That's, thank that's you. cool movie. I like it. Yes, sir. Hello. Um, skinny guy earlier stole my question about Call of the Dead, so I'll ask you a different one. How did they make you look younger in Black Ops 2?
Uh, sir, I think security might be coming. I think I'd be more scared of him. In Black Ops 2? Yeah. How'd they make me look younger? Yeah, you had black hair, a mustache. Oh! <laughs> That one? <laughs> you know, they did. <laughs> I paid them for that shit, dude. <laughs> you know how, how much it costs to look younger? You know, they were going to bring in a plastic surgeon, but I said, no, dude, you can just do it digitally. It's okay. I'm not, and I'm not asking for the real deal. But maybe you can make me look like somebody that when Michael Rooker goes to the gym, he would want to look like. <laughs> so, so I got a tan. I, I, have, I have curly hair, like I used to have more, more hair and curly. And, and uh, yeah, and I got the big tat. I thought it was very cool. You thought they did a good job? I did think they did a good job. I, dude, I, I, I love, but the attitude is all Michael Rooker. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And that game is awesome. If you guys haven't played it yet, if you're a gamer, of course you've played it. If you're not a gamer, go out and buy it. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me because I don't get a penny from any of that. So. Wow. Hi. You are awesome, honey. Kapla. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for really a roller coaster ride of emotions that your character gave um, us because it was just amazing. There was times where we wanted to hate you, but then there was times we felt sorry for you, and I just loved it. But um, I guess my thing is, is Merle Dixon your favorite um, character that you've played so far? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what, Merle Dixon it has been a ride, not only for you, but for me as well. I mean, uh, I expected to go in there and do one or two episodes and be done with it. And uh, that, was, that was how the role was written. And, um, and so I was there, all the producers were on the, and the writers were on the rooftop. And after the second episode, after I... Uh, you know, by the way, I thought that was quite a fair fight between me and T-Dog. Because it ended up being me and T-Dog and the Mexican cat and then the cop. So it's like Merle against three or four guys. I think that was fair. <laughs> right? Well, you're yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, it was fair. I mean, I didn't pull my gun out until after the fact. And that was like to announce that it's democracy time, right? Right. Which I thought, in my opinion, was one of the funniest lines ever written, you know. So, uh, anyway, yeah. Thank you. You're a sweetheart. Thank you for asking that question. Is that hot, by the way? It's incredibly hot. I thought so. Yes, brother. Um. Do you have any more plans or wishes in the future to play as a uh, zombie-killing badass? <laughs> I, I, I never have any plans. That's my life story. Uh, um, as an actor such as myself, your entire life is spent on the go and, uh, and kind of um, you're not sure when the next gig is going to happen or who's going to offer it. And so that's kind of how I like it. And uh, I like not knowing where I'm going to be next. And I like not knowing what kind of role I'm going to do next. And uh, I, I, I kind of find it exhilarating and, and exciting each time. It's like Christmas opening up a new package. You know, if you got a package for Christmas, and this would be like sort of getting one every time you find out what you're doing next. I'm doing something next, and the hard part about doing something early on and getting cast is that you can't really talk about it. So I can't really talk about what I'm about to do. Hopefully it'll come out soon and I'll be able to yak away. But thank you, good question. Thank you. Uh-oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, God, these Air are the bombs. hardest ones. <laughs> oh, you little beautiful people. <laughs> Go ahead. What's that growing out of your head first off? What? What is that? Their ears. Oh, their ears, of course. <laughs> Fuck, silly me. <laughs> yes? Um, how many zombies have you killed in The Walking Dead? Oh, thank you. I'm glad you clarified because, <laughs> you know, just the other night, <laughs> you know, I did pass through Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> you know, okay. Is that what happened to the zombie beauty pageant? I, I mean, she wanted to know how many zombies I've killed. And so, yeah, you know, there's a couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then she clarified. Stop it. <laughs> okay. Um, and The Walking Dead? How many zombies have I killed in The Walking Dead? You probably know more than I. Do you know? Have you counted? No, I wasn't exactly paying attention. <laughs> You're like my second favorite character, though. <laughs> second the best, you know. Second the best. Children are so honest. I'm your second favorite character? Second. If I had been your first favorite character, you would have counted? <laughs> Well, you know the saying, first the worst, second the best. Who's your, who's your first favorite character? Carl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who? Carl. <laughs> oh my God, that hurt. Oh, that hurt. He is a cute little bugger, isn't he? <laughs> and you know, I think Carl likes Merle. Maybe. Remember, that la remember the episode after Merle had uh, said bye-bye? Carl was a little bit teed off with his dad that Merle is dead. You, I saw that in his attitude. I think he was beginning to like me. Possibly. <laughs> You Thank know. you, and I don't, I actually, to answer your question, I don't really know how many zombies I, I've killed in The Walking Dead. I haven't been counting, but Merle's not a kind of, yeah, Merle wasn't the kind of character that would be counting, oh, one, two, three, he didn't care, hell, he just killed them all. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care of those ears, they're beautiful. Hi. Mo most of my family thinks that you're more of a cruel character in The Walking Dead, except for me and my dad who thinks you're more misunderstood. What do you think you are, cruel or just misunderstood? That is a really, <laughs> really good question. I think I'm a bit cruelly misunderstood. <laughs> uh, cruel? You know... I don't know what's, what is cruel? I mean, think about it. Think about what Rick does, you know? I mean, I think stuff that Rick does is quite cruel. You know, driving by that hiker, that was very cruel, you know? And, 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 and waiting until the guy was dead and then taking his shit, that was really cruel. Dude, if you're gonna take somebody's crap, go ahead and take it. I want your stuff. I want it now. <laughs> Boom. You take it. Okay, you don't wait until the zombies eat him up and then take it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know what? I, I, think, uh, I think you're both right. Cruel at times? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, misunderstood almost all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Michael. Very good question. Thank you, baby. Hi. I just wanted to say that you are my number one favorite character. <laughs> and you're the biggest reason I'm here. And I've been going on and on about you to my friends for the longest time. They're so annoyed with it. <laughs> but um, I've heard that all of the characters who get killed off have a death dinner. And I was wondering what yours was like, or if you had one, or you just went straight to a bar and just... <laughs> opted out um I, I, I don't drink 
They don't believe me. They do not believe me. Did you sense that? They don't believe me. Oh my God. <laughs> Shush it. They said, I, I think people don't believe me after they saw that 44 ounce or <laughs> I didn't drink all that. I'm sorry. I hope you know that. That was just for a photo. It was a photo op. 44 ounces of Long Island iced tea would kill that. you, okay? <laughs> okay, uh, what was that question again? What was your death dinner like? If you what was my what? Your death dinner, like with the rest of the cast, if they sent you off or whether they were just like, bye Michael, nice to see you again. <laughs> well, my, my death dinner, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. You know what? We went to this public place. We were not able to talk death at all. <laughs> I mean, I was good. perfectly willing to talk death. You know, I'm always willing to do that. You want to talk death? Okay, come on, let's do it. <laughs> you know? Um, but no, we went to a place that was in um, a, a beautiful little community that, that me and uh, Norman both uh, had our apartments in. And it was quite delicious. And you know, every, uh, everybody that I knew on the show, not everybody on the show, but the, maybe about 20 people showed up. Uh, no, it was just like a regular big dinner thing. And uh, I, 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 um, I don't think I had to pay. <laughs> I, yeah, I think they bought my dinner. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. It was, a, it was a pretty easy, simple death dinner. Uh, I don't think there's any really major thing. I think we all go to these... Uh, these uh, public places, so we just go and sit down and, and have dinner, and 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 uh, it's one of those pink elephants in the room. We don't talk about it, <laughs> and you know we didn't talk about it at all. Actually, we just <laughs> ate and and left. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question is, if you could have played any other character besides Merle, which character would you want to play, and why? No <laughs> sugar tits. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I uh, dude, I think I'm gonna I think I'd I'd play Carl. <laughs> He's got the biggest hat. It covers him. I'm, I really don't like sun, so I, I like to stay in the shade. So he's got the best hat in town. It covers his entire body. His body is so small that he puts the hat on and it's like he's got this constant shade around him the whole time. Uh, I, I kind of like how that, that character is sort of developing. He's got some uh, interesting conflicts and, and stuff. And I, I have a feeling that's going to be a really cool role in the future. Okay, it's a cool role now. So it's, yeah. But that, uh, to answer your question, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. I just wanted to start off by saying uh, thanks for doing what you do, man. You're awesome. I love watching everything that you're in. But what I wanted to ask was, for you personally, what was probably the hardest thing you had to do physically when you were on The Walking Dead? I had to remove this tick from uh, this one actor's... Never mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest thing we have to do is remove the ticks that latch onto our bodies during the filming of this show. Uh, a lot of times we're out in the woods and we're running through the, uh, the bushes and stuff and um, hoping and praying we don't step on a snake or something like that, something more dangerous. But um, yeah, removing, I think really honestly, removing the ticks are, are, is by far the, the, uh, the hardest thing you have to do. You know, it's like, oh my God, no. No, no, no. Oh, you know, you get it and you pull it out and you're hoping and praying that it doesn't break off inside. And then if you don't, you're hoping that it doesn't get mad at you and start burrowing in even deeper. And then under the skin and crawling up and then getting into your brain and inside your skull and then and worming around in, up there. That's the hardest thing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In the scene of The Walking Dead, um, I had a question when you were torturing Glenn. What did you enjoy from it and why? <laughs> what? 
In the scene where you tortured Glenn, what did you enjoy from that scene and why? That's a little dark. Um, I, I enjoyed the, every moment of that scene. Um, I was, <laughs> the, 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 my fellow actor was actually quite good, all tied up. He was able to, uh, he was able to take the, uh, the blows and look like they, that he was really getting hit. You know, I, I, the, the timing, his timing was excellent. Um, I, I thought it was a, a little, a, a bit unbelievable that he was as strong as he was. You know, because if I had some ugly mug like me staring down at me with uh, an arm that's made of a knife, I would be like, yeah, man, they went that way. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when you catch those mothers, kick that one guy's ass because I don't like him at all. And that one chick, you know, I, I, would, I, would, have, I would have spilled the beans right away. Like, boom, gone. I, they, I would have gave them up. Big time. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, yes, Michael. sir. Go ahead. Hey, Michael. I just want to say that um, you and your obviously um, your brother Gerald Dixon, you guys are amazing. By the way, uh, my question was um, like what like besides um like what uh, is your opinion of each of the other actors, like th their characters in The Walking Dead? Oh, uh, uh, what was your you want me to want to know what uh, what I thought about the other uh, characters? Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? We, when, we, when we first started doing the show, uh, we would have these read-throughs early on before the episode began. And by the second season, they stopped doing that. It just took too much time. And the third se season, we, never, we ne never did that kind of stuff. And um, uh, but by that time, everybody knows everybody. And we, we actually become quite uh, close uh, good friends, and uh, you know, you're working with someone 10, 12 hours a day. Um, uh, you learn their likes and dislikes, and, and uh, as in life, you know, sometimes you have conflicts, and sometimes uh, you you got to solve those conflicts to continue working together in a positive uh, manner. And uh, that uh, that was cool. That's that's what happens in all of these shows. You uh, you get to know people. You get to love them and like them and, and sometimes you get uh, to be a little bit annoyed with them and, and everything in between. So uh, I, I ended up enjoying everyone on the show, you know. I, I, I've been trying my best to learn how to do a British accent so that I can actually understand them. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, we only got what, what, six minutes left. So we can take one more question. One more we do question. Apologize. Come on, one more question. I we can do good. in five minutes. We could do more than one question. That's my really bad accent. <laughs> Holy shit, that was that sucked. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sir. I gotta say, just in case this is the last question for the win. Go ahead, okay. give it to me. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, in the more recent episodes, Carl takes kind of a dark turn as the. Uh, series continues I have on. no idea which turn he takes. I didn't say that. You said that. That's your opinion. Shut up. <laughs> How do you think as the show goes on, objectively, they're going to have that character develop? Being I don't know. I don't care. That's not the good question. I can't answer it. I love your question, but it's not for me to answer. Next question. Go ahead. Get another one in here. Thank you. I wish I could answer, but I can't. Go ahead, brother. Uh, my question was, uh, we've already seen it a couple times as a plot device, the you know, characters coming back, like delusional and stuff. Do you think we'll see Merle return at all? Like, Hell no, I hope not. Next. <laughs> Go ahead, young lady. Um, you asked me? Yeah. Um, for uh, whenever, like if a real zombie apocalypse come, would you, like whenever you're trapped on the building, would you actually like cut off your hand or what would you do? I'd cut off my big toe. That's about as far as I'd go. Next. <laughs> Go ahead, next. Quick, see we got more than one in? What the hell's wrong with you, woman? My, f my favorite thing that I've ever seen you in was Slither. I thought that was a fantastic movie. What was it like to work on Slither? Hell yeah! 
Okay, now, even though we don't, we don't have a lot of time, you still have to pose your question a little slower so I can understand it. Go ahead. What was it like to work on Slither? How much fun was it? it like a lot of fun. fun. Next. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Hello, next question. <laughs> um, I'm not. Okay, go ahead. Ask your question. I really love the way that your character evolved, started out as kind of a... Go ahead and ask your question, right, boy. Yes. Which did you prefer, being the bigot or the anti-hero? The anti-hero anti or the bigot? Yeah. They were one and the same. Get out of here. Next question. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I was wondering how... Bigots can be heroes! <laughs> God! Come on! <laughs> Next, I'm sorry. So I was wondering how it was to work on Henry. Great movie, loved it, by the way. What do you want to know about Henry? How was it working on it, trying to get into the character? It was the, probably the most difficult role I'd ever done uh, before and since, and uh, even now, although Merle Dixon has been quite a, quite a complicated uh, endeavor. And, and, and um, uh, plotting out the through line for this character has been uh, very challenging, uh, to say the least, and uh, very rewarding. Uh, and uh, it's been probably thus far one of the most rewarding roles I've ever had the opportunity to play. And, and enjoying all of you folks out there who come and, and uh, sit down for an hour and listen to me uh, yak and rave and be a maniac and, and say silly things is really a, a great pleasure. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for coming. Now get your little tails on over to my table and uh, I'll sign some autographs for y'all. Thank you. Let's get a big round of applause. Yay! That's going to break. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming out. We really appreciate it.